This one. Nice Retina 2A. It's got the Roden stock Halogon lens. Custer of mine bought this one. It was working nicely in the shop. He got it home. And the shutter wouldn't go. See if it'll go for us now. That's it. It's weak click, that's all that happens. In fact, you can see the blades open and close as you wind it sometimes. And what's causing this? Well, it'll be the position of the shutter. The timing's not right. And when it's in one position, full round in one direction, the shutter will cock. Full round in the other position, and the shutter doesn't cock. So, loose shutter, and the timing being one tooth out from the ideal position here. You'd certainly find that if you set it to a 500th of a second, you end up with nothing. There you see the shutter blades open and close. Well, that's what he was getting, except on all the speeds. And it's simply because the shutter is loose and the timing is not correct. Now, how would the timing to be, be not correct? Well, obviously someone's had the shutter out at some stage to uh, service it and they've made a mess of the job. But that's not where it stops. I opened up the front of the shutter to check what was happening. When I unscrewed the front lens, which was very tight, there's our normal trim ring that sits in here. This, these washers here, are the shim washers that should be at the back of the shutter. Some clown has put them between the front group and the, uh, the lens. So it's exceptionally unlikely that the focus is correct. But that's a really odd thing to do. Whoever took this shutter apart had absolutely no idea what they were about. I don't know how, that, how well they did servicing the shutter if that's what they were doing. But they certainly, someone's had that shutter out. They've put the shim rings back in entirely the wrong position. Got another little joy with this one, of course. The frame counter doesn't go. And that will be down to a broken counter, frame counter spring here. So, that's the story with this one. I'm not going to show you all the tricks and turns. I'm only going to pull you out as and if I find anything interesting. As in something that's been done that was incorrect. Well, I'm actually part way through the reassembly now. I did found, find two more contributory, co contributory causes, causes to that uh, problem of the shutter not cocking. And basically, the film advance wasn't throwing the cocking rack inside the cocking action inside the shutter far enough on the film advance stroke. Well, one other reason. Because we'd already identified the fact that uh, the mount, the shutter was loose and so it was flopping away from the gear and wasn't quite pushing far enough. But the gear here that cocks that is held in place with this guide and there are two screws on that. Well, those screws were loose. That probably meant that that gear was able to move, push across, effectively taking away some of the, uh, the force that should have gone to cocking the shutter. And the other thing was this. This is the film advance shaft and the, it's quite a thin section at the top. It's not very broad across here as you can see and that's a 3mm threaded hole in there so there's not much meat left here. And what happens if it's been forced is the top twists and it has the effect that up here where the film advance lever is attached will rotate slightly in the uh, anti-clockwise direction so it's not moving this shaft down here the squared off piece here quite as far as the top part's moving because it stops there's a, a 
the lever is effectively blocked from swinging any further by the action of the frame counter spring. And so it means that the lever reaches the end of its stroke, but the shaft below here has not rotated quite as far as it ideally should. And that's certainly the case here. This shaft has got a twist in it. And there is an answer. Uh, basically, I have to clamp the squared off part of the shaft right at the root there as closely as I can, and at the top as closely as I can, and just twist it back into shape. And I do that with a, a couple of brackets that I've made from this piece of the film advance mechanism. Basically you can see that squared hole, that's what couples with that squared shaft. And you can also probably see that this doesn't want to push on there all the way. That's because the shaft is slightly distorted. But effectively what I do is I put one of these on all the way at the bottom of the square and put another one all the way at the top of the square and twist them in opposite directions. And you can take that twist out. You've got to be fairly cautious about it, but since it's either straighten this or find another one that's in better condition, which is always going to be a challenge, or just ignore it. So the answer is to straighten the thing up. More crimes against humanity. When I removed the rings here at the back of the, the, the shims at the back of the shutter, the ones that were fitted at the back of the shutter, here's half of the one. It's not a complete circle. That's well, that's glued on there. Someone's put that on there with glue. That was a um, an odd thing to do. So we've got half a shim glued in place. It's, given that there were shims under the lens at the front of the shutter, it doesn't bode well for what I might find on the inside. Well, there we have it. It's all back together. Did I discover anything else interesting while I was dealing with the shutter? What can I say about that? Uh, yeah, the shim rings. The shim rings that were on the back of the, shut, the lens and shutter assembly, there, there were too many. Of course, there were shim rings tucked under the front lens for some apparent reason. Well, they should never have been there. To a certain extent, the number of shim rings that were added under here and the shim rings that were behind the shutter compensated for each other. But of course there never should have been shim rings under the front. Once they were gone, I had to remove shim rings from the back, adjust them, basically take out one metal shim and uh, replace it with one paper shim. The uh, damaged half shim, of course, I had to get rid of that and all the glue that was stuck on the back of the shutter. But apart from that, the shutter job went quite smoothly. The only other odd thing was the aperture setting here, the lever, that had been bent in so that it was extremely stiff. Um, I presume that someone had bent it in so that the click stops um, were much more positive or much more difficult to move from one aperture to another. So here's the camera, it's all back together. I'm not going to deal with the Zeiss bumps on the back of this one. They're quite small, but the leather is nice and sharp. The, uh, the printing, it all looks quite good. If I strip that leather off there, I'll lose the, the sharpness of the embossing to a large extent. It's uh, certainly something I would do if the bumps were more prominent or the leather was more ugly. But it doesn't really pay to do it in every case. And of course this camera needed the frame counter spring. And I needed to... There are problems with the shutter here, as I said earlier, stemmed from multiple causes. One, the shutter itself was loose. The shroud here and the gear that it supports was loose. The shaft at the top here had a twist in it. Um, 
there were loose screws on the bracket that held holds down the rack in the top of the camera. Now all of those loose screws they just allow things to move so that when you push from one end stuff does, doesn't necessarily move at the other end to where you'd expect it to be. But this is all ready to go, that's the main thing. Shut it, the focus is nice and smooth. Range finder is clean. It uh, tracks correctly. I'm sure the owner will be pleased to see this one come home. So, thanks for watching.